Hey everyone, Charlie Power Games here, and today we're covering something that is very interesting of a topic, actually, 10Hz Comparator Priming. Now, Comparator Priming is a vanilla mechanic, which means that, well, this is basically a Nintendo mechanic and how the game functions. I'm gonna be explaining why that is and how that is in just a moment. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, you know, the standard deal, and yeah, let's get straight into it. First of all, why does Comparator Priming work? Well, when a Comparator is powered, it waits 2 game ticks or a redstone tick before it checks for input signal strength. This is why an Observer will not prime it. The Observer goes off before the Comparator and it ends before the Comparator checks for signal strength. This is also why two Observers work. Because one primes it and the other one provides the signal strength that it checks for. In the case where there is another tile tick component in front of the comparator, it gets higher priority, which means that it processes before this observer has time to turn off. And as you see, it works. So, coincidentally, when a comparator has another tile tick in front of it, say a repeater or another comparator, it has the same tile tick priority as a repeater. So, we can actually prime it just using repeaters, which is exactly what happens here. Now if we check, the observer turns on, the repeater turns on, but it'll turn off in the next tick, but this one will turn on which means it'll directly pass through the comparator. Here's a line of comparators primed exactly like this. Over here I have a system that cancels it with one single strength and a repeater output which basically allows you to take output, right? Uh, so if I go ahead and pull the lever and then I take a step twice, you see that this prepares these comparators around, and because they have the repeater tile tick priority, it actually works due to the tile tick entities blocks being the comparators there. So that primes them, and in the next thing, this is gonna turn on, which is gonna pass through all of them. Wait two ticks, goes through this, and two ticks we have output. Now, the sources of the ticking signal or the priming signal and the main input can be different. This is what this setup will show. So this observer will trigger one redstone tick before this repeater, but this repeater will be read instantly. So if I go ahead and do that and we step two ticks, you'll see that the observer is now priming the comparator. And in two game ticks precisely, this repeater will output and the comparator will be checking for signal strings. So as you see, it works. The signal strength here is exactly the output of the repeater. Alright, so how we do this in an order is by basically assuming the update order in which the comparators get primed. So over here, as you see, the dust updates from this side to this side. Yes, dust is locational, but it doesn't send block shape updates out locationally, which is basically it changing color, which the, the observer detects. Uh, so it'll update from here all the way to here. That's also the order that they will check for signal strength in. So this one checks first, it sees the repeater output, and then this one checks, it sees this one's output, and so on and so on and so on. And as you see, they're all being primed, and in exactly two game takes, this repeater will output and it'll pass 14 signal strength through all of them. Which is exactly what happens. Now if we want to, say, subtract 13 from that, we can do that very easily. As you see, it does exactly as is expected. It takes 14 input, it subtracts, and it outputs 1. This is also how the logic of my primitive 5 hertz full ladder works. Yes, I'll get to the 10 hertz stuff, I just need to explain it step by step so it's easier to understand. So if I were to input, say, 3 plus 5, that'll pass into the logic, which will get primed in exactly 6 currently being primed and that will pass through this comparator in two ticks, which will calculate 0, 0, 0, 001, output 8. This is a replica adder, never making that again, it was a nightmare. So to prime it at 10 hertz, we would somehow need to provide a prime signal, but no signal strength for it to read. Well, and that's exactly what this setup right here does. Basically how it works is that there is a small zero tick off pulse in between the two ticks. So if I were to prime it like that freeze. Oops. What you'll see is that none of the comparators are turning on. That is because they don't read signal strength from the observers, only get primed. And if I were to take freeze, make sure we're on the right half deck. Oh wait, no, actually I can't do that because that would override the priming signal. That, that I can do. 
see that it turns on instantly. If I keep doing that, it stays on. As soon as I shut it off, that's off. Works with a 5 hertz clock. And it works as intended. Now, why exactly this setup of observers? The first one also always has to be the singular one. That is because this one turns on before this one, which means there's a gap in between this one and this one. Turning off and turning on. Now, why I am using this exact clock is because competitors and observers actually have the same priority on the Tialtic scheduling list. This is also why this works with observers. So, basically, this stays on the same priority. Now, taking a look at my adder, that is exactly the technology that I use. There's dual observers almost everywhere, and they work in this exact logic scheme. Now, as you see, the control ends get a bit complicated, and, well, basically all of the logic does. That is because you want things going off in the correct order, and the carries are a bit complex, because you don't want to have interference, and you don't want things going off in the wrong order. So you want to have carries go uh, layer by layer, pretty much. Now, to understand how this works, you have to understand carry cancel addition. But pretty much what I do is that instead of signal strength lines, what I do is that I have computer lines that either fully cancel or fully carry. And they're both primed by the same wall, which basically means that you can have this go off before that, and so on. Uh, because there is only two comparators per layer and it works out perfectly. Here's a better example of that rippling mechanic. Basically, if I were to input a signal here, it ripples through all of these comparators in basically a downwards motion. And this is repeatable forever, and if you prime all the comparators, it is instant and synchronized. Uh, and if you basically have this line go up before the calculations afterwards, which is also why the control logic is here, it works very well and is pretty much flawless. But yeah, that's everything I had to say for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, if you think it's pretty smart tech, uh, and you want to see more about it, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, likes are appreciated, and the schematic for the other will be in the description. See you next time, aha out.